Hello everybody and welcome back. This is uh, part two of our look at um, inequalities. In the last video we took a look at linear inequalities and this time around we're going to look at quadratic inequalities. So just like with the linear inequalities there's kind of two ways we can approach this. Um, we can do it graphically or we can kind of do it algebraically. So we're just going to look at an example of uh, one example of each of those. So um, Take a look at this problem here. I gotta solve this equation here. Um, solve x squared minus two x minus three is less than or equal to zero. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna graph the related function, which is the function y equal to x squared minus two x minus three. And so um, in order to graph this, there's a few ways I could do it. Like I can tell from this uh, picture, from this standard form, I should say, that my y-intercept is gonna be at minus three, one, two, three. So I can tell right there because of that, negative three, that's my y-intercept, but I can't really tell much else from it. So what I might do is I might just write it in factored form, which would, is gonna be y, um, let's see, plus one, that's y <laughs> equals x plus one times x minus three. And so from that, I can see that I'm gonna get roots that are at x equal to minus one, and x equal to plus three, one, two, three. And so now the picture of my parabola is starting to take shape. I can tell that um, since my roots are at minus one and plus three that my vertex, my, my line of symmetry is gonna be right at x equal to one. And so I can see that down here, which is two over one, two, and four down, one, two, three, four down. And I can see that this is gonna fit my parabola if I kind of fill in these dots. And I kind of just got it from, uh, um, my normal pattern of over one, up one, over two, up four. So there's my parabola. And so um, I've graphed the, the parabola itself and you can see I used a solid line. The reason I used a solid line like before is because it's gonna be less than or equal to. And now all I need to do is choose a test point and then see if that test point satisfies my, my inequality. So um, maybe I will choose this point right here. Maybe the simplest point I can think of would be zero, zero. So let's see um, what we get if we substitute zero, zero into my equation. So I want to test a point um, to see if it's going to work for this function. And the function that I graphed here, um, remember that I, I just substituted y in for the other side of this inequality. So y is greater than or equal to x squared minus 2x minus 3. And so I've chosen a point there, 0, 0. And I'm just going to substitute this into my function and see if this is correct. So I've got 0 is uh, greater than or equal to 0 squared minus 2 times 0 minus 3. And you can see I end up with 0 is greater than minus 3. And so this is true. This is a true statement. And so I know that the point zero, zero is gonna form uh, one of the answers for my solution set. So just like we saw with linear inequalities, um, how a line is gonna divide our Cartesian uh, plane into two chunks above the line and below the line, we're also gonna see that with quadratics. Except because it's curved, we might think of it as like inside the curve and outside the curve, or if you prefer, above the curve and below the curve. And so since the point zero, zero works for this function, then that means that any point in this same space, which is sort of inside the curve, those points must all work as well. And so you can test any of these points and they should, they should work, okay? And so um, I can look at a way to solve this. This is a, a graphical solution. I can look at a way to solve it algebraically. And so if I think back to my original, um, my original equation, which was x squared minus two x minus three, and I'm looking to see where is that less than or equal to um, zero from my original function. So one way to, to do this would be to go ahead and find the roots of this function, which we sort of did already. That's just x plus one and then x minus three is less than or equal to zero. And so you can see the roots occur at x equal to, and so you can see the roots occur at x equal to um, minus one and three. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a number line and on my number line, I'm gonna place my roots. I've got negative one and I've got positive three. And then I'm basically gonna, I recognize that those roots are dividing um, my space into three possible regions. And so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test each individual region and see if it matches the inequality. So I can test any point, for example, out in this space, 
uh, to the left, any point here in this space, or any point over here to the right, and see what happens in each of these intervals. So for example, let's just test. Let's test uh, x equal to negative 2 and see what happens. Well, I've got negative 2 squared minus 2 times negative 2 minus 3 is less than or equal to 0. Negative 2 squared is 4. Minus 2 times 2 is plus 4 and then minus 3. And so I've got uh, 4 plus 4 minus 3, that's uh, 5 is less than or equal to zero, and I can see that this is false. So that is not part of my solution set. Everything that's over to the left of negative one will not be part of my solution set. So let's try now uh, a point in here. So I might test in this region, I might test x equal to zero, just because that's gonna be nice and simple. And so I would get zero squared minus two times zero minus three is less than or equal to zero. And so you can see this becomes negative three is less than or equal to zero, which that is very much true. And so that region is part of the solution set. And then I should, although it is a quadratic, and so I might have an idea about how this last interval is gonna go, but I'll test it just to be sure. So let's test x equal to four. That's something off in this region. And so I get four squared minus two times four minus three is less than or equal to zero. So I get 16 minus eight minus three is less than or equal to zero. And I can see that that's gonna be five again. And so five is not less than or equal to zero. So this is also false. So I need to have a way to show that basically this middle region is going to be where my solutions lie. So the first thing I do is I'm going to circle the two points that form my roots and I'm actually going to fill those in. So I'm going to fill in those points and that means that I'm including those points in my solution. And then I'm going to I'm going to fill in here this space. So you can see that I am basically highlighting or filling in anything in that region. And that just basically tells me that anything from negative one to positive three is a solution. If you wanted to write this, um, if you wanted to write this out kind of algebraically, you could say negative one is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to three. So that might be kind of like a numerical way to write out this picture that we've drawn. Now, I'll just point out a couple of things. And so if, for example, this had been, imagine that we had the exact same inequality here at negative one and three, the only difference was the equal sign. So if it had been um, x squared minus two x minus three must be less than zero, but not equal to, then when I fill in my region to show this, I would circle my roots, but I would leave them open. So I would leave the, I wouldn't fill in the, the circles and then I would um, color in the space in between. And so that might be how I show that. If for example, I wanted to show the opposite, I wanted to show x squared minus two x minus three must be greater than zero, Again, I draw my number line and I'd have my roots, negative one and three, and then I would, um, I would color these in. So I would, or I'd show, I would circle them, pardon me. And then I would just show that everything, it has to be everything outside of those points. So I might just draw arrows that go away from this in that direction there, okay? So that is it for solving quadratic inequalities.